there's more downs than ups. Like these ten fights get no recognition. I didn't earn a penny. Doesn't those my career was going nowhere? It's just on the same small hall, small hall, small hall. Does that make sense? I was at Starbucks and then I thought, I thought you know what? I'm gonna send a tweet out to Eddie Hearn. So I just tweeted Eddie Hearn. I didn't think anything of it. I said, Eddie, I heard you're doing a show on March 11th, Liverpool Echo Arena. Give me 600 tickets and I'll sell the show for you. And then it just like blowing up. The best squad there for sparring, training, and everyone from all over the world is there in LA. So you're basically sparring world champions, you're sparring people in the same level as you, you're sparring people better than you. You go there to become better, if that makes sense. Why Sam Jones? I just like his, the way he goes about his business, like his work ethic, the way he pushes his fighters out. He's, he's very smart. He knows exactly what he's doing, if that makes sense. And he gets the best deals. He's proven, which is the main thing. Because as well as everyone's got to make money, you need the best interest of the fighter because you can get hurt in this, in this game. Today, hailing from Bolton, we have a professional fighter who made his debut in 2018. Yeah. 10 wins, zero losses. Had a decorated amateur career with 97 fights a huge ticket seller that's grabbed the attention of one of the UK's biggest boxing promoters, Eddie Hearn. Currently a huge light welterweight prospect that's en route to be one of the next British Pakistani boxing star. Inshallah. Khalil, the major Majid. Welcome to the podcast, bro. Thank you for having me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Bro, it's an honour to be a part of your journey in some small way, get to interview you. And it says a lot about your character, man, coming down. Listen, you come on to a podcast that's not even launched, giving me an opportunity. So it goes a long way. It says a lot about your character, bro. So I do really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Anytime, man. you got support anyone you can. Khalil's got some major news to drop. It's common knowledge now, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's all over social media. But before we get into that, I'm just going to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Okay. okay. Um, which fighter do you like right now, either upcoming or established? Canelo. Uh, Canelo. Canelo, yeah. Why? Just his style, his ferociousness, the way he breaks down opponents. And each fight, he seems to be getting better and better, even though at the age he is, and considering he's one of the wealthiest athletes in the world, he still has that hunger to go train every day, which, you know, sometimes they say it's hard to get out of bed when, you got, when you're got when you sleeping in uh, silk pyjamas. Silk pyjamas. And he's doing it, so... Yeah. yeah, respect, man. Yeah, it's ferocious, absolutely. If you could have one dream fight with anyone, who would it be? Uh, Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. Why is that? One of my favourite fighters. Is it? Yeah. Style? Everything. Everything in terms of like... Power, speed, footwork. Just Interesting. Boxing IQ, everything. Yeah, he's a legend to be fair, yeah. Probably pump to sleep, but still in it. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, your top five fighters? Uh, right now, or of all time. Answer either or. I'm going to say Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, can't say Muhammad Ali, Fly Mayweather. I like Canelo, and I'm gonna say Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury, yeah, yeah. A lot of controversy around him right at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, with his um, reluctancy to fight Usyk. And just it's what happens behind the scenes, what people don't see from like the business deals, and it's like he said, she said kind of thing, but you won't know. It's, it can't be revealed, obviously, because of the contracts and stuff. But I think Tyson, I don't, I don't see why Tyson would not want to fight him. He's fought everyone. So, yeah, well, I'm a Tyson fan. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm a big Tyson fan as well, 100%. Yeah. But that 70 30 split, whatever's going on. Uh, but Usyk, but, Usyk did accept it. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is that 30% what um, Tyson Fury offered him, that 30% is, in, is a lot more money than what he's going to make fighting someone else. If that makes sense. So yeah. that thirty percent, that thirty percent is a big sum for Usyk, because obviously the A side is Tyson Fury. He's like he's a massive, massive name. Yeah, it's debatable though. To be fair, yeah, it's, it's wrong in some way, but because he's got Usyk got most of the belts, I suppose. Yeah, of course. But moreover, I think where it broke down, we're speculating here. Like you said, things happen behind the scenes. She said, it? she said, yeah, 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 exactly. But um, apparently, the the word on the street is that Usyk put in the contract that listen, um, we'll do the seventy thirty split. I'll accept, but afterwards. We reversed that. No, but Tyson didn't want a rematch clause. Just winner right. takes all. Right, right, right. But Usyk wanted a, re a rematch clause. There you go, man. You guys decide in the comments what's the, what's the reality, man. Um, best fight you have watched? Best fight I've watched? Uh, what, professional or amateur? Both. Uh, anything that you think, wow, this is the best fight I've watched, either, either live or on TV. Uh, the best amateur fight I've seen is when me and my dad was in Bolton and we watched a guy called Ronnie Efren in the ABAs. I think he stopped a guy. I'm thinking no one knocked him out, sorry. 
as an amateur and as a professional professional I'd have to say I think when I'm watching Ami at the arena what when he beat uh Barrera Barrera yeah yeah that was his after his loss to Preston right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. it's a good fight that to be fair um but yeah that's, that ends a rapid fire session bro and we'll go straight into it I'll allow you to let us know what the major news is no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's this news, man, that's come out in social media? Uh, the major news is Alhamdulillah have signed a, a contract with Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing, and I will be fighting now live on the zone. First fight should be July, inshallah. Come through that, then I've got a title fight in September or something, or something along them lines. You absolutely smashed it, man. Listen, we need a round of applause for that one, man. Listen, that's amazing. Yeah, I think you... Short so, sold yourself there, man. That's absolutely mega news, bro. You got assigned to Eddie Hearn, one of the biggest boxing promoters out there. Um, everybody pretty much wants to get assigned to Matchroom and then Marshall, you've done it, man. So we're gonna dive into that story, how you got to that point. Yeah, of course. What I want to start with is, you know, growing up, there was no South Asian fighters. Yeah, of course. Right, none. Even considering to be a fighter on the pro level, yeah. like people didn't even think that was even possible. Do you get me? Then Ame Khan came on the scene yeah, yeah. and then we all started banking on him, the first South Asian fighter. We were all thinking, oh, I, hope it's a, I hope it's good, man, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's repping his odds, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And I think he opened a lot of doors. And basically, bro, like now, fast forward to today. There's laws now, yeah, there's, there's laws coming through now, which is good, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And yeah, the point I mean, you mentioned that is, did you take any inspiration from him at all growing up, anything like that? Or? Yeah, of course. I mean, he like kind of paved the way. Like He opened the doors for a lot of fighters, to, a lot of South Asian fighters to come through. And now obviously, when he's retired, there's loads like coming through, like from, not from all over the country now, especially in England. So it's it's a good thing. Yeah, hundred percent. They're making a lot of noise, man, at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Like he pro provided like a blueprint, didn't he? Yeah, or... of course. Like he's he kind of kicked down the doors, but he was like the first fighter to do it. But now there's loads of fighters now, so he's, he has made it a little bit easier. But yeah, he actually he paved he's paved the way so far. So yeah. Yeah, and a lot of comparisons are being drawn with you and him both being from Bolton. Yeah. Obviously you've got your own styles. Yeah, of course. You wanna, you know, do you take it as a compliment or do you think, you know what, oh, nah, I wanna cement my own legacy? I mean, obviously he's done really well for himself. Well, I, I'd be happy bro, if I achieve a half of what he's achieved, you know what I mean? Uh, inshallah, but yeah, I don't think there's ever gonna be another Ami Khan again, which just me, that's just me saying it. Um, I think everyone has their own style. Everyone's unique in their own way. So I'm just kind of focused on my own career, my own journey and obviously, um, it's good to look at Ami and what he's done in his career and how it's, it can help me, like which way to go, you know. Yeah, learn from the success. Exactly. As well as the mistakes as well. Mistakes happen, it's part of life. Absolutely, 100%. So bro, let's take it back, right, from the beginning, right? Yeah. So what was your entry into boxing? I believe you was about seven or eight. Yeah, no, seven, yeah. Seven, seven yeah. yeah. I was yeah. just a fat kid, bro. Um, really? Yeah, I was fat. You was a fat kid? I was fat, yeah. Ah, I can't imagine that. No, seriously, I was fat. Uh, quite chubby. And then my dad used to do kickboxing or tie boxing, sorry. Um, and to be fair, I mean, I was in the gym at the time at Bury ABC where my dad used to train there. And then I just started punching the bags and I just carried on from there. And then you can't compete till you're 11. So I just had my first fights at 11. I won my first two, then I lost my third one. I remember I lost in Liverpool and bro, I was like crying my eyes. <clears throat> and then I just carried on since then. You just can't, it's like a drug, you can't stop. It's like, what else am I going to do if that makes sense? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So did you get into it like, because you, you were overweight or is just... Yeah, I was just, I was chubby and I just started punching the bugs and just skipping and then it just, just carried on from there. There was like no particular reason why I started. It just, I was in the gym as it is, just watching, being a fun. And this just happened then. Yeah. And then you, you mentioned you lost your third fight. Yeah, I lost my third fight, yeah. So what did that teach you, man? Like, I was uh, crying. I was crying my eyes out. I had to wait four years to avenge that loss. Oh, really? As an amateur, yeah. Right, right, right. Because the guy wanted to fight me, so I met him in a competition four years down the line. Smashed him. Battered him. Battered him. There you go, man. Speaking of, obviously, you mentioned your dad's yeah. a kickboxer, or did a bit of kickboxing. Right, just to keep fit. Just to keep fit. The major senior is actually <laughs> in the background sitting down. You know, with the, with, with your dad, for example. Yeah. What, what was it like growing up? How was he as a father? Oh, he's hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> used to do, used to do, get back in his bar and get back in the car on the way home. Now I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, um, yeah, because I seen in an interview that after one of your fights, you were saying, oh, my dad's a bit hard on me. Yeah, no, so it's one... good though. It's like discipline. You've got yeah. to, it's a result game at the end of the day. So you have to be beating these kids if, in order to get somewhere in the sport. Otherwise, you can't play boxing. You know what I mean? So it's good that he's been tough on me now because 
it's helped me get so far. Now I'm just at the bottom of the ladder now, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So now it's about climbing up the ladder, inshallah. Yeah. So what values did he teach you when you were growing up? Is it like, listen, you need to be focused. Yeah. Don't just, do this, don't do that. This just, is what we stand for as a family, that sort of thing. It or? was just the three things. You know, like you do your, your mosque, your school and your boxing. Like that was the three things we always stood by and that's what I did. Yeah, he's a foundational. And, and to be honest, like I've heard when I was doing a bit of research on you, yeah. like looking at your Instagram and your trainer, they all talk about good things about you. Yeah. Instagram meaning, sorry, uh, Pat Barrett. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, saying yeah. that he's a good kid. I didn't expect that myself to honestly. I was right. like, I just seen it myself and then I thought fair play to him. Yeah, because everyone I come into contact with and ask about you, they're like, yeah. it's a good, well mannered kid. So I'm asking about your dad because I think, what did he do right? Do you know what I mean? I I've think got he's, kids the myself, so. he's the complete opposite to me. <laughs> <laughs> was it? So you know what it was nah. back in the day and stuff. A strict upbringing, would you say? Nah. No? It's not a normal upbringing. Yeah. Just, you just have morals like, you know what's right and know what's wrong. That's all it was. There's nothing like too deep into it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Just keep it grounded and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just keep grounded. That's like, like what's strict really? Do you know what I mean? It's like, do whatever you want, obviously, but you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Fair enough. And what was it like growing up in Bolton then? It was good. It's like, to be fair, it was just, just didn't leave the little, uh, little area that we lived in. Just all I used to do was just go train and come home, go train. Go. I remember in the summer holidays, I saw the lads in the area chilling and stuff. And you can't do it because you have gym. So yeah, you go, to, yeah, you go yeah. boxing and then by the time you come home, you're tired. And then just, that's all, but that's, it's a sacrifice you have to make from early to start kind of reaping the rewards later on, if that makes sense. It's like an investment. You're not going to get nothing out of it from the start. But later on down the line, you might start, you know, seeing some fruits of the labour, basically. Yeah, no, 100%. And, you know, like it's, you're seeing it right now, aren't you? There you go. I'm not seeing it right now. This is just the start, alhamdulillah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's from a pro career, it, it's kind of been up and down, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I've kind of broke through in one way that I've signed with uh, Eddie and Matchroom, alhamdulillah, but now it's about, this is just going to kickstart my career now in the way we want it to, you know, to kickstart. What people don't realise is more downs than highs in boxing. Well, it's just in life as well. Yeah, I want to touch upon that later on, actually, yeah. the, the the highs and lows. Um, so from there, from your amateur career, yeah, you, sorry, you started your amateur career, yeah, should yeah. I say. Yeah, yeah. Um, Talk me, walk me through an overview yes. of your career. So I had, I think, was it 97 or 98 amateur fights? I lost seven or eight, um, boxed all up on, all over the country, even some parts of Europe. Um, my main goal was an amateur, obviously everyone's dream is, as an amateur is to go to the Olympics. Well, the first one is to box for England. And that was my dream to box for England. That's like a world title fight now as an amateur, basically. Mm. I did that, alhamdulillah, once I completed that, um, the next step is obviously getting on the GB squad to get to um, the Olympics or like major competitions. So then I've been, I went with a few competitions with them, but I never like got onto like the podium squad or anything like that. So it's like, you're kind of not going nowhere. So you have to keep with the, obviously the Olympics come every four years. Right. So the last year, I think I was 17 and I got told for win the ABAs that year, then I have a good chance of getting on the squad like permanently. But then I got a bad decision. Like I won the fight and I didn't score one point whatsoever. So I was like, this does not make sense. So I'm like, do I wait around for four years or do I just turn like turn pro and go to work? And that's what I did. I just turned professional after that and just started uh, laying the, like, the foundations of becoming a professional, which is a lot different from amateurs. It's a totally different game. And it's took me time as a professional to develop because some people develop earlier, some people develop later. I've developed later, if that makes sense, from like your body, your strength. It takes time. Some people... Um, People, some people have knockout power from earlier. Some people start developing power later on. I've just, I've been one of them fighters that started to develop power later on in my career, if that makes sense. Yeah. How would you describe your style then? Uh, now. Fast, elusive, good feet, and hoping I can pack a punch now. Yeah. yeah. So, so during the amateur days, like when did you realise you had a, like a gift of the sport? Like, you know what, I can do this full time. I can go far. It was my first competition. I did actually. Uh, my first schoolboy competition, I had like five fights to get out of the region and I think I stopped three of them. And I was like, oh, I didn't expect it myself. Right. And then I got to the final that year and then actually um, I fought a lad from London in the final and I won the fight, but they didn't give me the decision. It was, I lost by 1.54 it was. And I was like, but then I just carried on the next year, the next year. And then you just like, you start getting praise from like all the England coaches and all your other teams and then, People tell you you're going to do well if you stick at it. But the hardest thing is sticking at it. 
because uh, obviously you're going to get some bad decisions and some some things are not going to go your way, but you just have to keep sticking at it. And then I was lucky in one way that I always had my dad there and my mum because my dad always kept me in the gym, always, even when you don't want to go to the gym. So it kind of like it pays dividends. What what made you persevere then, despite setbacks after setbacks? Like what made you like, what was it, was a family or? Yeah, it's, as well as a family, it's just like something, it's like, you're starting this podcast now. Right now, you might not be getting nowhere, but you got to keep sticking at it, sticking at it, and eventually it'll come. But you just the hardest thing is consistency, mm. and I've always been consistent since since a child. I don't know why, just have, and it's helped me. This is what's I feel like this is what's helped me get through my life so far. Trainer, who's your trainer at the moment? And my coach at the moment is Paulino. Basically, just down the road from here. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so how long good. have you been with him for? Maybe three, two and a half years. Okay. Yeah, two and a half years. Maybe three, two and a half years, three years, yeah. Yeah, it's quite important to be gelling with the uh, training, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Got a good bond, so yeah. Yeah, because I think like, you know, Anthony Joshua, for example, since his defeat to Andy Ruiz, he was moving trainer to trainer. But to be fair, I don't think he's got a, a training problem. I think he's got more of a psychological barrier to overcome since yeah. his defeat. It's just, it can happen to everyone. Like, I can't really judge on him. I don't know his life, so... I can't really give an opinion on how his structure is. Yeah, and you're, you're both signed to match room, man. <laughs> yeah. There you go, man. So you got to keep... Uh, <laughs> got to keep neutral. <laughs> keep neutral, in it. I like it, man. <laughs> Going to... So you turned pro soon after, uh, 2018, right? After yeah. the overview that you just mentioned. Yeah, turned pro uh, 2018, yeah. Walk me through your 10 fights, man. Oh, f- <laughs> I feel like I've had 100 fights, bro. Um, so I had my first fight. I actually had my first fight my first pro, I think it was like 12 days notice. Really? Yeah, it was mad. So when I first turned pro, I turned pro with a Hall of Fame promoter. Can't name him for obviously reasons. Um, I was making my debut at the O2 Arena. Right? And for my debut, I think I did like five, 600 tickets, something mad, right? From, this is just the whole Northwest going down south. And then I'm on the way to the weigh now. I'm left on Thursday. Wayne's on Friday, sorry. Yeah, so I'm on the way down to the Wayne. And then I got a call from my manager saying, your fight's off, the deal's off the table. I'm like, I've not got a clue about the boxing business now. I'm new to the game, like professional business. Um, So I remember, I was like, what, I was like, what do you mean? And then he was like, oh, doesn't, then you're not getting paid. So I was like, right, so how does this work? I was like, I'll, I'll carry on fighting, no problem. I'm not bothered. And he was like, no, you can't fight. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, because he can't get paid. This, per- When I'm fighting, like four different people get paid, obviously. So the fight got cancelled. And then from that fight being cancelled, I got dropped from my from the promoter. No way. I was like, oh, I just didn't expect it. This was all like within two, three days. So then I got dropped and then the promoter didn't want me back, basically. Well, he, he, he wanted me back, but on a completely different deal from, from what we agreed. Um, so then it was was not worth it. So then what I did was um, I had to go back down to small hall shows and I've been on small hall shows since for the last five years. Yeah, five years, yeah. Um, and I had to sell, so you have to sell tickets to fight. Yeah, yeah. But I'm glad it happened to me because it built that foundation level because if I, um, if I started off at the arenas, obviously my profile would be a lot bigger now, maybe, you know, earn more money realistically but I wouldn't understand the grassroots of boxing and like connecting with people and, you know, selling tickets and building them relationships because when you're already given everything, you don't really worry about the other things. But this is, I've seen a completely different side to boxing from being on small hall shows. And Alhamdulillah, I'm, like, I'm grateful for my dad that he's actually like helped funded this himself, this boxing, because you're not earning no money on the small shows. There's nothing like you fighting, you've got to pay your opponent. So if I'm fighting you, I have to pay you. If that makes it's crazy, but that's it. And you have to sell tickets because you got to pay the promoter for his show. But I've done that, and the I've broke out of that now, and obviously I've signed with Matchroom. Let's break that down a little bit more. So with the small hall shows, for example, yeah, how does it work in terms of pay? You mentioned ticket sales, right? Yeah. So I so, don't have a clue. So yeah. So basically, say like now, this just say you do ten thousand pound in tickets, yeah. Fifty percent goes to the promoter, so now you're left with five thousand pound. And then you got to pay your opponent. As the more the more you win, the more the opponent costs. By the way. Oh really? Yeah, because they they can't afford to get stopped or a cut or anything because then they get banned for a month, twenty eight days, and then they can't provide for their family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, 
out that out that five round now, whatever the opponent costs, you have to give them obviously, and then whatever's left, it goes to your coach or your manager. It goes to your coach, manager, and then your team. So but then so basically you're minus now. Does that make mm, sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, it's exactly. not what people think, in it? Exactly. So you're minus. So the last ten fights I've had, I've basically fought for free for ten fights. What people don't see. Yeah, this is one thing I wanted to touch upon the reality of boxing that yeah. people don't actually yeah. see in it. But when you get to like a bigger level, I yeah. would imagine, do you, do you get paid for yeah, a so salary like, for so, fights? Or? Yeah, so like now, obviously I've signed my matchroom now, I'll be on a salary. Obviously it's not the best salary, but it's a start on the line, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. But I don't have to worry about paying the opponent no more, if that makes sense. Because matchroom pay the opponent now, now I'm with the promoter. Um, but obviously you still got to sell tickets, obviously it's part of the deal and stuff. Um, you've got to keep building your fan base. But prior to being signed to a manager, I mean, prior to, prior to being signed by matchroom, sorry, if you're not, selling tickets on the small shows you can't fight if that makes sense unless you have to pull out the money yourself if mm. that makes sense yeah so you yeah, yeah. so you got so you're complete you're going minus each time each fight that's mad mad why because you, you've been from bolton yeah i've noticed you was a major ticket seller i'm the lawyer yeah so why do you think you was a major ticket seller. Like, bro, I don't even know myself. Man. Really? <laughs> I really don't know, bro, yeah. What, what uh, tools, relationship, technology, no, I did just, you leverage? <laughs> no, seriously, I just, I feel like if you be good to people and you just yeah. speak to someone and just be normal, you just build relationships. Like, I've, I have gone to a different gym in Manchester, for example, just um, to do strength conditioning. And I just got to speak to people and you don't even, I've only met them once or twice and then they just follow you on Instagram and then they start coming, you just be nice to them, they start coming to, you know, buy tickets themselves. Which is yeah. good. It's just about building relationships. Yeah, but the the community in particular in Bolton are really behind you. Really behind me, like yeah. mad. Cause like, I think you mentioned in the interview that you 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 know one of your small hall shows. You didn't expect not many people turn up, but the whole yeah, thing was, was full. It was mad, yeah. And it happened second time round as well. Second time, yeah. And you don't know why. <laughs> I probably don't know why, yeah. So I just, I just think if you just be good to be like, I don't know in Bolton. I, I think. I don't want to sound cocky, but I kind of know everyone in Bolton. And Bolton's quite a big place, you know what I mean? Even though it's small, it's quite big. And even in Manchester, so most of my most of my people that come to fight, come watch me fight, sorry, are Bolton Manchester base. But I just, I don't know, I think my dad plays a part in it as well because obviously he brings his friends and then I bring my friends. And then we have like a little healthy rival uh, competition who sells the most tickets between us, you know Is what it? I mean? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Who's winning at the moment then? I am. Is it? Yeah, uh, standard, uh, in it? More connections, in uh, it, I suppose. Age and experience. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, innit? What, what's the script with the like, thingy then, bro? Like, people that are talented fighters, yeah. but are not a big name, don't have a social media following. Yeah, it's hard. It's difficult. What's the harsh reality? You have to sell tickets. That's what, bro. It's like, unless you have, a, like, a, a private investor, someone's going to invest in you, but then they're not going to get no returns for God knows how long, do you know what I mean? Because you're not guaranteed a wage in boxing, as crazy as it is. So right now, if you want to make money as a boxer, You'd rather be an influencer if that you know you see like influence boxing now. Right, yeah. They're getting paid good money. Do you know what I mean? More more money than world champions are making because they but they've got the platform, the YouTube, etc. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to be like um, you have to bring some kind of value. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's basically a business now. Isn't it's it? a business. Yeah. That's that's what like when I turned when I when I left Amateur to turn pro, this was all new to me. I didn't have a clue about this about. Because at my debut, when I got well, when I got dropped, I was like, I'll fight for free, no problem, I'll fight. But then your manager's not letting you fight for free because he's got to get paid, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So at this point, you wasn't working anything like that? No, no nothing, no, nothing, bro. Because I was training two, three times a day. Yeah. So basically, when I was coming right now, I was coming up, just basically living up. My dad was literally covering my funding, literally paying for everything. Mm. Still does, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, no, because I, I was I had a boxer on here as well. He's yeah. like three and no. And basically just starting off and he's just saying that he's working a nine to five job. Yeah, it's difficult, bro. That's exactly. mad, isn't it? It's difficult, bro. It's very hard. Yeah, people don't... Bro, it's like now, I have a few people that come to my fight and just because I do X amount of money in tickets, yeah? Yeah. They think that money's mine. And I'm like, bro, and take the cost out. This is what I mean. They don't... They just see money. They think... Say if I'm selling you a £40 ticket now, for example, they think that £40 mine. It's not mine. You know what I mean? Mm. That, that £40 is getting split three ways, maybe four ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like you said, you're out of pocket, innit? Out of pocket, you I remember, remember Tony Bellison in an interview as well, that, you know, he was winning like Commonwealth titles or a few titles yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you watch that interview? Yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. And yeah, you're saying yeah. he's out of pocket still? That's what I mean. crazy. And he's like up there for the, the major guys. You he know only I mean? made his money when he fought David Hay. Yeah. That's when like he had his like, he was able to secure his family. Other than that, he's literally going minus the whole time, which is what people don't see just because you're fighting on TV or 
you're on a platform. It's just it's very difficult boxing. If you try to explain it to someone, they just they'll just say, "Why are you doing it then? Why are you doing it then?" You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's actually interesting. You said that because the the, the guy I interviewed before in three and he's mentioning that inspiring session. He was yeah. just getting battered for two years as well. He's finding like Anthony Crawlers and the Smith brothers and stuff like that. Um, and it comes to a point where he packed his car up crying yeah. Yeah. and just saying, listen, why am I doing this for? Like, what's yeah, going on? Just... Did you ever have a, not a doubt, but like, because obviously you believe in yourself and all that. Yeah. But did you have any tough sparring session that think, you know yeah, what, course... questioning my ability here, what am I doing here as well? Yeah, of course, bro. It's like sometimes you have a bad spar, you think, is this for me? But then you go home, you know, you have a shower, you brush yourself off, you go again the next day. Yeah. But it happens, you know what I mean? It's like if you work a nine to five, for example, not every day is going to be a good day but you've got to keep doing it. It's just being consistent. That's all it is. It's just being consistent. So going back to it again, I know you said you don't know why, but yeah. what makes you consistent, bro? There's got to be something. I don't know. Seriously, I generally don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's a passion, isn't it? It's just like, if it's up to me, I'd fight for free. If people don't realise if my training was free, everything was free, I'd fight for free. It's just a passion. That's all it's a Simple passion. Simple as that. It's, it's just a passion, yeah. Speaking of cost of training camps and the cost of going out and stuff like that, you recently went to, is it LA? LA, yeah. With Hamda Shiraz. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did that come about? The opportunity just presented itself uh, through someone who looks after Hamza and then it was just a no-brainer to go, basically. And I went out there for six to eight weeks and I just learned a lot. And he was a great, he was a great uh, role model and boxer to be around. So what was the takeaway when you went over there? What did you learn? Because he was mentioning like his camp, yeah. one of the interviews um, cost him, to, when he goes to LA, yeah. between 70 to 100K. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy money, like obviously for a camp, six to uh, eight week camp, I think but, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically America is like the pinnacle of the sport. Like the best go out there for sparring, training, and you're in the Premier League, if that makes sense. So it's expense. It's expensive. Yeah, and you're saying that the same camp would have cost him in the UK about like 30k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like my camps here is like kind of ideally the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So what what is it? Sorry, why did you go to America then? Is it quality of sparring you mentioned? It's quality sparring. trainers. Yeah, it's this. It's more experience. You're in the Premier League over there. If that makes sense. Like you got the best sparring, the best training. It's just everyone from all over the world is there in LA. So you're basically sparring world champions. You're sparring people on the same level as you. You're sparring people better than you. You go there to become better. If that makes sense. 100%. I know what happens in sparring, stays in sparring, yeah, yeah, but yeah. any any stories you can tell us? Oh, I, got my, I, got, I got my ass handed to me a couple of times out there. Really? Like, yeah. That happens though, innit? Happens, the process, it's, a learn, it? it's a learning curve though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you been knocked out? No, touch yeah. foot. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah you won't. Inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> so yeah, so like, I mean, obviously, did you see how they operate in, in terms of teams and... Is it, is it just literally for quality sparring opportunity to present yourself? I, I want to learn. I'm a sponge right now. Yeah, that's what I did. It's like even just being around Hamza, I just watched how he did things. I was just a sponge soaking everything in. Obviously, then there was Ryan Garcia in the gym at the time. And it's just good to see how these guys, um, do you remember I think these guys are ahead of me right now. I'm like at the bottom, if that makes sense. These guys are way ahead of me. So you got to learn from these kind of people because they're doing the right things, making a name for themselves. They're doing, they're doing well in boxing. And they get the, at the end of the day, they get the results in the ring which is all what's, that's what it all comes down to, getting the results in the ring. So you have to be around fighters better than yourself and try to learn from them, if that makes sense. But put everything, what works for you. Yeah, 100%, 100%, man. So then that's the overview of your fighting career so far to date. Yeah. 10 wins, alhamdulillah. 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 Zero losses, yeah. right. How did it come about me and Eddie Hearn and... What, what was the script there? Because I think you made a shout, not a shout out, a challenge to him on, on, on yeah. Twitter or something. Yeah, that's what I did. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, of course, no, man. No, no. I'm a professional, do my research. So yeah. what, what, talk, walk me through that, bro. So what happened was when I came back from LA, the same promoter wanted me back, right? You can't mention who? No. Okay. But the deal was terrible. Like, it was just, it was just terrible, right? And, it's just, and I was like, what do I do now? Like, I'm doing all the right things, I'm making the right noises, but I'm not really getting anywhere, if that makes sense. And there's only so long you can keep going out of pocket for. That's what people don't realise. Like, you're spending, 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 but nothing's coming in the pot. So I thought, I was just sat, I was actually at, um, I was at Starbucks, and then I thought, I thought you know what? I'm going to send a tweet out to Eddie Hearn. So I just tweeted Eddie Hearn. I didn't think anything of it. At first, when I did it, within five minutes, I thought, I'm going to delete it. I thought, it's a bit embarrassing. But then I just left it, but then within five minutes, my friends started retweeting it, liking it, sharing it. And then random people just started engaged, like, engage, uh, engaging on it. So what, what was the tweet? What did you specifically say? Uh, what did I say? You know, 
I said, oh, so there's a show of March 11th in Liverpool. So I seen it on one of these boxing pages and I thought, I need to get myself on that show. How do I get myself on that show myself? Right, so I was, right. I, was, I was a free agent. So I was like, the only way I know to contact Eddie is through Twitter. I don't have no direct link to him at the time. So I sent the tweet out. Um, I said, Eddie, I heard you're doing a show on March 11th, uh, Liverpool Echo Arena. I'll give me 600 tickets. And I'll sell the show for you. That's, that, mm. that was the exact tweet. And then I was like, I was a bit, I thought it's a bit cringe that. So I was going to delete it. Because I just left it, right? And then it just started blowing up. And then this boxing page put it on Instagram. And then all my friends just started commenting on it. And then it just started, the engagement on the post was like the most engagement he's had on any of his um, social media. Social, yeah. And then somehow, I didn't, I didn't hear nothing back from it. But then someone from Matchroom approached me themselves said, look, we can't put you on that show. They so said, we can't put you on that show, but then we are, we're doing a show April 15th and we'd like to have you on it, but it's from Zahn. Mm. So I was like, oh, no, what? this is like my opportunity now. I was like, what do I do? So I was like, I've got to speak to a couple, couple of people. I was like, is there any chance of missing Ramzan to go on that show? And they was like, no. And I've never missed Ramzan, so I thought, I'm not going to start now, do you know what I mean? But it's just good to like, good to ask because it's a big opportunity in the day. So anyway, I turned it down and I said, I can't, I'm not able to do it because of uh, Ramadan. Then that's it, I didn't hear nothing back from him. But then there was another show in Bolton, uh, a Channel 5 show that wanted me on the show. But that's in Ramzan and all. Oh. So two opportunities come up both in Ramzan. But bearing in mind, I've got a fight on a small hall show, my last fight uh, at the Bowlers, February 18th. So I'm trying to fight February 18th and I'm trying to fight three weeks after on, on obviously one of the main shows. But I can't because of... Uh, the day what runs on runs on. So then I did. So anyway, I had to like just say no, I can't do it. So I didn't hear nothing back. And then I fought my last fight. And then Alhamdulillah won, stopped the kid. And then I did an interview after that fight. And then it just kind of like blown up a bit, if that makes sense. And then my manager now, who came up, Sam Jones, he's like well established manager. He got the deal. He broke the deal with with Matchroom, so he got the deal. And then that's how we just they just took off from there. What did he do? Did he, how did he connect you guys? Or so so after this fight, I was a free agent going into this fight, my last fight, sorry. And I needed a manager, and I wanted Sam Jones for some time. I was many time with Sam two years ago, but it didn't it didn't materialize. Why Sam Jones? I just like his, the way he goes about his business, like his work ethic, the way he pushes his fights out. He's, he's very smart. He's like um, he knows he knows exactly what he's doing. If that makes sense. Yeah, and he gets the best deals. He's proven. So he, to be fair, it was my dad that wanted Sam Jones because the way he spoke to promoters, he doesn't take no shit. If that makes sense, he does. He's got the best interest of the fighter, which is the main thing. Because as well as everyone's got to make money, you need the best interest of the fighter because you can get hurt in this in this game. That genuine interest he's got. Genuine interest, yeah. So I spoke to him after my fight, and his actual his actual words were, "If you want to be managed by the best, you know where I am." That was his exact words. I think it was about two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Message me and then I thought this so I said that to my dad. And then that's it, it just happened. We had a meeting with Sam, boom boom. Then within three days I'll sign a match room. Like a face to face meeting. And that day the face to face meeting. It was just sort of a contracts. Right, right. Just sending over email stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you met Eddie Hearn? I've met him yet, no. Not yet. I'm gonna see him next month at the arena May twenty seventh. So they offered me they offered me May twenty seventh at I mean arena, but obviously Ramzan finishes this next week, sorry. For ten rounds, I'm not gonna be ready in three weeks. I need a full camp. So yeah, but it's a start. I've I've got another date now in July, and it's just gonna kick start now, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Touching upon, you had two offerings, right? So March and April. Like yeah. Two opportunities, basically. Yeah, two opportunities. Come, yeah. Come your way. Yeah. I turned right. them down. This is before me even knowing I was on a sign with Matt Room or any deals on the table, anything whatsoever. Right. That's that's so interesting because. Yeah. You had two opportunities come your way. You've been working all your life for this moment. Yeah. It's come your way. And obviously we know why you declined it. But for those who might not know, um, basically it was a testing moment for you. So Brian, I said that in an interview, I thought it's a test from God this, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So we just you just basically said, look, I'm doing it for the sake of God, like I'm not yeah. doing it. Do you know what I mean? I seen an interview with Eddie Hearn actually, he was saying basically Respect to him, man. He was like, I don't know if you've seen the clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, Islam, because he, he actually promotes quite a few Muslim fighters. And obviously, they all take uh, Ramzan off. 
Exactly. You become a little bit more religious as you get older. And I, and I feel like I want to learn more about certain religions. And I feel like the discipline of Islam through Ramadan. But I, I like the discipline of that and the respect of that. You know, I feel like in life there's not enough respect of things. And I think to respect a faith is something that is a good quality. And, you know, when Ramadan occurs, you see the severity of that and the, well, the importance of it is a better word, you know. And I, I like that. I, I respect that and I admire it. It's never in question if that's going to be broken. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, for a normal person, they might say, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Ramadan, but I'll just, you know, break that there. And I'm sure that does happen. But ge generally, what I see is the people that I know would not do that. Where I respect it in boxing is, I've had it before with Amir Khan. I've put conversations with people saying, uh, can't fight there, it's ramming it. I'm like, guys, <laughs> you know, see how much money's on the table? Absolutely not. And I respect that. But he respects that now. You know that's, what a, I mean? that's a nice little, yeah. nice little clip of him, man, saying, yeah. like, you know, giving props to Muslim fighters, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, like, look, they put opportunity. You can't attempt them with money, this and that. Well, other people I like, just might. I think what people don't realise is when you go in that ring, it's not about money. It's a lonely place. Like the only thing that comes, you ask the first thing you do is ask God to, you know, come, come out the ring healthy and safe back to your family. That's the first thing. So you know, you want God on your side, either. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, man. So that brings us to present day, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah. So what, what's your like sort of plans going forward? Is it the world title? Eventually, I mean, obviously, yeah, I know we're, we're, look, I know his baby steps at the moment. I'm on the bottom of the ladder. The bottom of the ladder. Yeah. Want to climb slowly, yeah. slowly. Take a step up at a time. Yeah. Hone your skills, stuff like that. Yeah. But what's your sort of, if you had an ideal? So obviously this year, I've said I want some kind of title this year. Right. That's been my, like, my initial goal, to get some kind of title. So I'll get my matchroom debut out of the way. Then we have the plan sorted, which way we're going to go. Like, I just want to fight. Like, because I got, I was injured uh, prior to this last fight. So I was at the ring for a year, no fault on my own, just injured, nothing I can do, just left to the side. So now I'm trying to make up for lost time. Talk to me about that injury, actually. So at some point, because yeah. setbacks do happen, innit? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what happened to your hand and what fight was it in? And It was my ninth fight. I fought, I um, can't pronounce his name, some Russian guy. But then he actually beat Eddie Hearn's prospect two weeks, no, three weeks after he fought me. Right, right. So I fought him, I beat him, but then I think in the second round, I was like, I was getting like a uh, pins and needles, like a sharp pain up my arm constantly, my left hand. So I was like, some, some, I was like something's not right here, something's not right. Jo is this during the fight? This is during the fight. This is like, this is like after the second round. Right. So I was, every time I'm punching, it's hurting. But obviously you can't pull out, otherwise you're going to lose. So you just gotta keep, just ride out the pain. And then I've took my glove off. I looked at my hand and it was like a balloon. Really? I was like, well, what's this? So I've iced my hand throughout the whole night and the day after it's still the same. It's like for a good three, four days. And obviously I've had to go see a hand surgery and this start. And I just needed time to recover. That's all it was. And it took about a year. So there was no surgery, just like, no, no, no. just it took could, time. You could get surgery, but it wasn't worth the risk of having surgery because obviously at the time there was more, there was more risk from having surgery instead of letting it heal naturally. Right, right. So I just thought, what's the point of having a surgery if there's so many risk? If it was like 2% risk, then fair enough, no problem. But it was like a, like a risk, so I just let, let it heal naturally and humble it heal well, perfect. It's a setback. But in that time I had off, I worked on other aspects. So just because I couldn't use this one hand, I still like worked on building my body, worked on my boxing, I spent a lot of shadow boxing. And it's actually helped me better because I've actually matured, like, you know, physically. Look a bit skinny now, but yeah. <laughs> So just basically, you kept back to basically, as you mentioned there, yeah, and yeah, then just yeah. like, just keep going. I feel like even though it was a setback, it wasn't a setback because it just wasn't my time then, if that makes sense. Everyone has a time, everyone has the time, and now I think it's my time now, inshallah. You, you touched upon it before about YouTube fighters and stuff like that, yeah? yeah. What is, I just want to get your opinion as a fighter, yeah? I want to ask a proper fighter, like, what is your opinion on these YouTubers crossing over? If you want me to be really honest, like I think it's good in a sense where they're bringing more eyes to the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. But you're a fighter. I want to hear someone. Bro, that's a fighter. All, all the fighters want to fight YouTubers, though. Like even fighters are calling out YouTubers because it's more money they're going to earn having a, a hard fight. If that makes sense. Obviously, I don't agree with all things, but I think they bring new eyes to the game. Listen, if a boxer, if like now, for example, myself, for example, if I had this platform, what the YouTubers have. Yeah, yeah then it's different than I'll be making money, et cetera, et cetera. But because boxers don't have that platform or they're not well known as a YouTuber, it is a little bit bitter towards, they are going to be a little bit bitter towards the YouTubers, but it's just white collar boxing, but 
because they've got a name, it's just bigger than white collar boxing, basically. That's all it is. Yeah, especially what we just talked about, like yeah. people that are talented, they yeah. can't, they don't have yeah. a social media following and stuff like that. But nobody's gonna push you out. You have to do it yourself, unfortunately. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have to do it. You have to do everything yourself. Yeah, and they're making like mega money. We're not mega, we're more than like pro boxers, man. That's what's crazy. Like, I feel like switching off on myself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick a YouTube to a YouTuber to fight, who would you pick? J Paul. J Paul. Yeah. Why? Just the biggest fight there is, isn't there? He's like the biggest one at the YouTubers. Oh, just purely money. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's the, he's the biggest name at all the YouTubers. He's the biggest name, yeah. Yeah, he's the biggest. Of all the influencers, boxers, I know he's like the biggest one. So obviously you want to attract the most biggest fight there is. Yeah, 100%. Are you guys in the same weight category? No, nah, nah, no, I was going to nah, say, nah, yeah, yeah. It's too big for me, bro. I'm so, okay, someone in your weight category, bro. I don't, you... I don't know anyone in my weight category. Yeah. Or YouTube. I just know, this is what I mean. It's like, I don't watch the influence of boxing. Obviously, I watch the Jake Paul, the Logan Paul, KSI. That's it, wasn't that? The rest I don't watch. What did you think of the Tommy Fury and Jake Paul that just took place recently? Uh, One, honest opinion, raw and authentic. I think Jake Paul did a lot better than everyone anticipated. Do you know what I mean? Gives him credit for. Yeah. In yeah. what way? Just everything. Like, it wasn't like a blatant win from Tommy Fury. I thought Tommy would knock him out. Yeah. But. It went the distance and he dropped on me and all, didn't he? Yeah, well, people say it's a slip in him. Slip blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, I, I, I would, I know, would consider Jake Paul a professional boxer. Yeah, he's, he's, he's earned his stripes, isn't it? He's earned his stripes. Yeah. But he did lose his first professional fight, though, <laughs> to a boxer. Yeah. Yeah, but listen, he's won in life in, in that sense, isn't he's it? Done Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. But the thing right. is, with Jake Paul, he's actually helping fighters get pe um, better pay. So he started his own promotional company, he's managing a few fighters. Because if you, people don't realise in boxing, you're not earning this great money. So like people just look at Ami Khan, especially the Asians, thinking, oh, we're all going to earn the same money as Ami Khan or Anthony Joshua. But it's, a, it's, a, it's like 2 3% that like make that kind of money and, you know, go clear. Yeah, 100%. So who, who are the 2% you would you say at this moment in time? At this moment in time, you've got to say Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Joshua... That's what I think of right now. Yeah. At, yeah. At, at this at this at this stage right now in this country, them two. Yeah. Yeah. And um who wins out of like Joshua and Tyson Fury? Oh yeah, sorry, you guys are match three fighters, I Come forgot. On Come on <laughs> right. You're gonna get me sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Joshua man wins. There you go, man. But yeah, man, um I want to see if you wanted to add any words into the podcast. And uh, we got um Khalil's dad in the background as well. The boy's, uh, you know, he's worked hard for it. I've seen him grow up from grassroots and he's very grounded. And as you can see when he's doing interviews, he's, uh, you know, he's very grateful for what he's, you know, what he's accomplished so far. But onto a better, you know, better awards now, what he deserves. He trains hard. Uh, he's very fully committed. Um, and I see it myself, you know. There's no one harder than myself on him, you know. And uh, good kid. He's turned out well. Um and inshallah, you know, I want to see him, you know, reach the, his heights, what he can reach, potentially he's got. He's got very good potential. He's had it from day one. I've seen it myself naturally. You know, as a fighting man, I've seen it myself, what the kid's got. Um, I've been around uh, young Amir when he was a kid as well. He knows me pretty well. I helped him uh, with the Kindler fight when he turned pro uh, in the Bolton uh, Reebok at that time. Um, so, you know, it's like seeing potential, but it's like nurturing it as well. And uh, having that commitment, you can you can do a certain amount as a parent for a child. Then he develops his own brain and then moves himself. So I've let him develop himself as well. I've you know I've done a bit here, there, you know, you know put him in the right in the right directions, which every parent would do for the kid. But um, he's built this fan base himself, you know, really well. Um, the way he has, you know, the way he talks, the media, the way you know he presents himself, you know, he's a good kid. So inshallah, you know, he'll, he'll go far if he keeps if he keeps himself grounded, which he has done. And I can't see any reason why he won't keep himself grounded. He'll go very far. Inshallah. Inshallah yeah. yeah. I look forward to watching uh, your fight live, man. Your next fight when it's announced, inshallah. Don't worry, brother. Down. We'll have you there, man. Don't worry. Yeah, no, inshallah. I'll be popped down 100%. Yeah, I'd like, um, like, like to thank... The thing is, I'm very you know, grateful for all the fans that come out for him. You know what I mean? All my friends, you know, the people who I know, friends who, who know me, and all walk of life, you know, whatever creed, religion, whatever, they all come out and support him. And uh, it's brilliant the way they've come out. And... Uh, it's fair play to the you know the, the way they meet him you know they, they praise him and uh, like he's got he's gone through dark times clearly no one sees the dark time he, he goes through he's been through a lot of hard times you know 
I can't do nothing. It's up to the Almighty to pull him through. We just pray that, you know, he comes through it all. And he's done it, you know what I mean? And uh, he believes in the Almighty and, he, and he's got him through to where he is now. And he's got a big platform now. And full credit to Sam Jones as well, you know. Sam Jones, I wanted him from... When I seen him, I like Sam. You know, the man, he's, in, he's in good hands now, you know. So that's what we, that's what I want now. Your dad mentioned that you went, to, went for some dark times, like yeah. what, what we're referring to here. Just like sometimes when you're doing boxing consistently, there's, you're not going, you're not getting no rewards, you're not going nowhere. This is what, this is what I'm trying to say, but there's more downs than ups. So, you know, you're having like these 10 fights beside this Eddie Hearn thing, there's, there's nothing that's come off it beside the Eddie Hearn thing. No, so like, say like the first five fights, sorry, I didn't get no recognition, I didn't earn a penny. There's, there's, my career was going nowhere, it's just on the same small hall, small hall, small hall, does that make sense? And it's very hard to break out a small hall. You can break out of it like through the connections, but then you just kind of sign to like, not the best deal. But a lot of time for everyone, it just, it just went my time and that's all it was. We touched upon about fans there for a second, a lot of people being behind you. If you had to give a message to your fans, what would you say to him? Just say, honest to God, I say thanks to every single, I, I say it every fight. I just say a big thanks to every single one of them that comes out and supports me. Like, it's not just, it's m my, my, my fan base, I'm like, it's very multicultural. I, I have whites, I have Asians, black, just everyone, different faiths. Everyone, it's, I sometimes think, like, usually, at, at first I, used, I just used to have um, Asians, but then it's like getting a few white people, and then it's like getting a few black people, and then they all get on with each other, as crazy it is. And they all know each other, like, from working with each other in the past and stuff. So it's a good little um, thing that I've got going, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. Listen, you know, what? from what I've seen anyway, like, good, well manicured, and I think, inshallah, you're going to go really far, God willing. And um, I just want to say, do you want to add anything else before we wrap up? Just like to say thank you for everyone who supported him from day one. Uh, the sponsors, um, you know, the people uh, who have, you know, stood with him all the way through, you know, and uh, I'd like to praise the Almighty for, you know, putting my son in this position where he is now. And inshallah, let's go, you know, up and onwards for the next fight. And let's get the whole of uh, North West behind him. And let's move forward and let's push it. And let's show Eddie what we are about and take it from there. Let it excel. No, bro, just thanks for having me on for today. Appreciate it. No worries, man. Thanks for coming on again. With that being said, nice one, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.